We'd like to welcome you to the Rural Experience Series. We have put these videos together so that they might help people who are out in the country to, to have a more enjoyable and fulfilling experience there. And for those who haven't moved out to the country yet, we hope that it will encourage you to make that move, that it might be a lot of hard work, but it, it's just a tremendous blessing, and we, we would invite each one of you to participate in it. We hope you enjoy the videos. We'd like to welcome you back to the Rural Experience Series. Today we're going to be talking about ancient grains, food for the future. In our presentation, we're going to be discussing many different kinds of grains, We'll show you how to, to purchase them, we'll show the, you how to uh, store them, and we'll show you how to uh, process them to make uh, delicious meals with. We hope you'll enjoy the, the presentation, and we hope you'll gain much knowledge from it. Nora, what kind of grains do we have here today? Well, we have a number of different grains. These are all whole grains. Here's a corn and a wild rice, and there's quinoa, teff, uh, millet, there's rye. rye. And it looks like kamut. Kamut. We've got some short grain rice. Yes, buckwheat, and um, oat groats, barley, and spelt. Okay, and we also, um, you'd mentioned just a minute ago about whole grains. What do you mean by whole grains? Well, this is how the, the grain is um, before it's been processed. It hasn't been smashed or, or flaked or, or anything. This is just how it comes from the, it's the seed of the plant. So, it, so unlike many of uh, the processed foods that you find in the store, processed grains, uh, these are all alive and can be sprouted, is yes, that right? Yes, they're alive and they're much more nutritious than anything that's been um, processed. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to explore some of the other uh, avenues that we can, how we can use these grains today. And uh, like I said, we're going to, we're going to show you how to, to store them, uh, uh, process them, and do several different things with these grains today. In the future, we'll even show how to make milk. Oh, from that these sounds grains. like a good thing. Yes. All right. Okay, Nora, if somebody's going to go and buy these grains, uh, how would they select them? You know, how would they be, how would you find them? Usually find them in like a health food store. We have one here uh, that's close by, and you can get uh, your grains pre prepackaged in oh like maybe four cup servings almost you know all the places have that or you can find them in bulk in um, in stores also you just want to make sure that when you find them in bulk that you look at the bulk packaging and make sure that it's, it has a lid on it that they're going to be kept clean and they're dry and uh, it's good to make sure that they are, they have a good turnover of their grains that they're not sitting there for years and years uh, because a lot of people don't know how to use these grains. You know. So it would actually be good to do a, a smell test on them as far as that goes because uh, it's true. I it's don't know if all of you have ever uh, smelled rancid grains, but uh, uh, those definitely aren't uh, health promoting. Uh, you want your grains as fresh as possible. So, uh, What you can do if you're getting them in bulk, you can um, just take a little bit out and just smell it in the package. and. It's very distinct. If you you can really tell if a grain is has gone rancid, it smells bad. So you can tell it. And uh, usually the grains, if they're they're not rancid, they have just a nice fragrance to them. They're not. It's not a bad smell at all. So that's that's good. And it's good. All these grains are organic. If you can find them organic, that's that's better to have them be organic. Okay, we've talked about the. The grains a little bit and how you select them. Now we want to talk about how you store the grains. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had this experience of buying bulk grains, but all of a sudden your bulk grains uh, sit in your pantry for for a month, two months, maybe a year, and all of a sudden you open them up and it's just full of moths and you've got some little worms in there and everything else. 
and uh, you know it's just very disheartening uh, when you when you spent hard-earned dollars and uh, you see bugs in it so we want to teach you how to best uh, store the grains uh, you know we've we've gone through all these things that we're talking about right now so um, nor how do we normally store our grains when we bring our grains home we grab jars just quart jars it's best if you put your grains into glass and we go ahead and put our our grains right into the glass jars so maybe we can show one of the grains open one of these up and and we're just pouring them inside okay and, and where are we going to want to store these after we have uh, have the grain inside of it you want to put it in a cool dark place is best although we've had we've been teaching about grains for about 10 years and we've had these little sample jars out in our our garage that's been uh, dry but it's been in a, a warm place in the summertime and we've had them for about six years and we opened them up today just to smell them to see how they were doing and they're all fine except for one and that was the barley it was a pearled barley so it wasn't just hulled, it was pearled, and that one had gone rancid. So all of them, you know, had done really good for six years. So. Very good. Okay, how can, we, uh, how can we keep the bugs out? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, we have some diatomaceous earth, and maybe you can tell what exactly that is. If you've never used diatomaceous earth before it's actually uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of diatoms before or not but they're like they like to call them like little uh, uh, fossilized. fossilized microbes uh, that they dig out of the earth and these microbes are the fossils are just like glass uh, but they're so small they're not harmful to us if we ingest them but uh, to a larvae uh, a, an egg, a bug that's inside your grain, it actually acts like a razor blade and it actually mm -hmm. cuts and dries the, uh, the larvae up. So it, uh, it just takes care of your, uh, your grain and storage and you know it's easily, you put it in there, it's easily washed off. Uh, how and much do we put in? We put one teaspoon in each one of the jars. Okay. All right, so let's uh, I have a teaspoon. As you do that, I'm going to reach down here and, and get a teaspoon, and we're just going to show you. You put it right on the top of it. Yeah, how to do it. We've just put this all our grain in here, and we're just going to put this teaspoon in here, and then seal it up. Seal it up, and we can actually shake it up a little mm -hmm. bit, and it will disperse through the the entire jar of grain and then when we want to use it we're going to be rinsing the grain oh three or four times making sure all of that is off you know although you said and it doesn't it doesn't it's not harmful to us but it's you know we'd like to have it off yes we can now, rinse it off. now a few other ways that you can take care of this uh, you you could freeze the grain uh, that's one suggestion. You can freeze it and then uh, after about a week's time thaw it out and then refreeze it again. And a lot of times that will cause the, the bugs to hatch out if they're in there and, uh, and it, will, it will kill them off and keep them from reproducing and eating up your grain stores. Uh, the only downside to this is when you freeze grains, nuts, things mm -hmm. of that nature, it act, you actually lose your vitamin E in there. Um, so it's, uh, we still find that the diatomaceous earth is going to work uh, better for long-term storage. Uh, another way that you can do it is to uh, have your grain in there and put a, a towel in between the grain and put some dried ice on top. And what that does is it sucks a lot of the oxygen and moisture out from the grain and then you can uh, 
after that dry ice has evaporated, then you can seal it back up again. Uh, in the past, we've used bay leaves in our grains too, and that has worked really good for keeping the bugs out. And I'm, I'm sure there are other methods that you have tried. These are just some that have been successful for us. So, uh, um, like I said, properly store your grains uh, so that they'll last uh, a good many years. Remember to take precaution in using the diatomaceous earth because it will uh, it can be ingested and uh, be harmful to your lungs just like any dust can so uh, it's better if you're going to use it or put any be using a great amount of it to put a dust mask on some kind of a respirator um, to take care of that. Okay we're gonna have Nora show you how to uh, sprout grains. Uh, very uh, beneficial I don't know how many of you have ever tried uh, wheatgrass, uh, juicing it, things like that. She's going to show you a, a real simple way how to sprout the grains right now. Uh, okay. How do we do it, Nora? I've got a cup of, uh, of wheat, and I'm just going to put it into a jar. This has already been washed, and now I'm going to put some water in there, and we're actually going to let this soak overnight, and in the morning, we're going to strain this and um, let it sit until it sprouts. Okay, we've let the grain sit overnight. Now we're going to do what, Nora? We're going to strain the water off? We are. We're mm -hmm. going to take the water off. And it's real important to get all the water off. What happens if you don't get all the water off? It'll rot. Okay. It'll. Yeah, and if you've ever smelled... Uh, sprouts that haven't been drained off well it's terrible so uh, you want to be diligent in uh, in getting all this water off the grain okay what do you do next let me put it back into the jar okay by tomorrow we'll be ready for a bigger jar you can see there's still a little bit of water in there but we're going to put a paper towel over the top and turn it upside down and get all the water out Okay, now how long will it take for this to start sprouting? Each grain is different, and um, usually wheat it'll take a couple days before you start seeing some sprouts. But I'm going to turn it upside down. Okay, so what are, what are the people actually looking for when uh, when they see their sprouts? Well, they'll see a little white tail. Okay. Will be the start of a sprout. What's the benefits of sprouting, Nora? Well, the sprouted grain is more nutritious than even the whole grain. The whole grain is so nutritious, but it's even more so when we sprout it. And from once it's been sprouted, then we can, um, we can plant it and make a, make a grass with it. And that's something that we can juice. And, and that's another, another way to, to use it. And we'll be showing that too. Yeah. Nora, should we just rinse this uh, once, twice? How many times a day should we rinse it? Twice a day, morning and night, you need to, to rinse your sprouts. Okay, and you're wanting to rinse them because, uh, you know, with anything, uh, you're going to get some bacteria growth on occasion. So, uh, rinsing this twice a day, it keeps your sprouts clean and it keeps them from, uh, you know, from going bad. So, uh, you know, it's just a good idea to be diligent. I mean, it teaches uh, when you're sprouting, you really have to be a good steward. And, and keep up on what you're doing. So uh, twice a day and your sprouts will be, they'll turn out great. The sprouts shouldn't be, they shouldn't smell, have an odor at all. You know, it's, they should just be real fresh smelling. Okay, and if they don't smell fresh, time to throw them out and start over again. Start over again. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, 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 another uh, thing that you can do is you can take a uh, just a the three percent uh, hydrogen peroxide, yes. and you can actually put that in your and rinse the sprouts with your water with that, and that will help to keep anything from growing in there that you don't want to. Yeah, about a capful or yes. two okay. of the hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take the funnel and put this back in, okay. and I'm just going to let it drain a little bit more. And then we'll put this back on. Okay, great. Okay.
Okay, we're going to wash the grains now. Uh, you'll be surprised how much dirt comes off of your grain. It's always important to, to wash it. For years I didn't wash it, and um, then I started to, and I was just amazed at how much, how much dirt comes off. So that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to show you how to simply wash your grains. So uh, this is barley that we're going to wash and cook in a minute. Okay, I'm going to put the barley into a strainer, and I don't know if you can see it, but I can see dust already coming off of that barley. We're just going to rinse it. We're just going to rinse it until the, it looks clear. You can look at my water and see that it's cloudy. And that's all you have to do. Now we're going to put this grain that's been rinsed over into a pan over here on the stove. Okay, now we're going to dry roast or dextrinize our grain. You don't have to do this, but it's going to make it uh, taste a little bit better and uh, it's going to be more nutritious. So I'm going to put my barley into my pan and I'm just going to stir it for about five minutes on a medium heat. And then when it's done I can put either my water or my broth in here. For barley it takes about three cups of water or three cups of broth to cook the barley. So that's what we'll be doing after we dry roast. Okay, we, we also dextrinize the grains too uh, to make it more digestible. So a lot of times people are, these days are having trouble, uh, stomach problems, they can make their food a little bit more digestible and more nutritious by dextrinizing. All right, the grain has uh, cooked for five minutes, just dry roasted. Now we're going to put a broth in. This is three cups of a vegetable broth. And we're going to bring it up to a boil. And then once it starts to boil, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer and put a lid on it and let it sit for about an hour. So the longer you can, it, the longer you can let your, your grains cook, uh, the more nutritious they, they are for you also, and the more digestible. So it could probably cook in a half an hour, but we're going to turn it way low and let it, let it cook for a full hour. We've now put together a, a few simple food preparations that will go together with our grains. Uh, Nora is going to put these together and uh, show you how you can put together a real simple meal out of just uh, uh, some wonderful things here. Um, what's the first thing we're going to do? It's fun to eat this way. Um, let's, let's try some teff. Okay. We made some teff. Teff has mucilaginous and so it'll turn firm if you'll leave it. You can eat it like a porridge or you can have it like this. So I've got this and how about if we put some peaches on it. We'll just make a pretty, pretty meal. Do some peaches, and then maybe we'll put some milk on it. Okay, this is, and this is a coconut milk that uh, Nora made, and uh, in a future video, we're going to show you how to make some of these milks from uh, different products, grains, and nuts. Uh, it's just, the possibilities are endless. So yeah, we're going to put a little bit on there. Does that look all right there? Looks good. Okay. Okay, and we can maybe put some... Some other things on here. Okay, we're going to put a few cranberries on there, it looks like. Okay. All right, so we'll set this over here and we'll let you see it in just a minute. Let's see what else we have here. Let's use some wild rice now. Wild rice, you can do either savory or sweet. Let's do savory since we did a sweet one last. Let's put some wild rice out. Wild rice is very nutritious and hardly ever do people use it um, full? Sometimes you'll see it in some like brown rice, 
but hardly ever. And I'll again, take. again, we're going to uh, uh, talk about when when we show you the wild, wild rice. I want you to notice that it's uh, it's puffed like uh, popcorn would pop. Uh, that's the way you want to cook it. Many people undercook the wild rice, and it's real crunchy. Uh, it should be very tender by the time you get done. Okay. Um, Nora looks like she's adding some peas, peas in with this. And maybe we'll put a red pepper. Okay. With it. Always. Uh, it's nice to have lots of color lots for a of meal. Lots of color. Uh, when you get lots of color in the meal, you get lots of nutrition. You're getting many different forms. So uh, the more colorful, the better. Okay, I'm going to put a little sweet potato on here too. So there's another way that you can you can prepare a meal. Prepare a meal. Okay, what are we going to go with next, Nora? Let's use some spelt. Okay, we're going to grab some spelt here and put some of that on. Okay, spelt is oh, it's nice, sweet, or savory too. Let's make this little meal sweet. And uh, spelt, if you like to chew, spelt is a little bit chewier grain, uh, but it's it's very nutritious and uh, it's very flavorful. Uh, what are you going to put on there next? How about if we put a little bit of maple syrup? Okay, so we're going to make this one sweet, sweet. Mm -hmm. instead of savory. So we've got some maple syrup, and we prefer, if you're going to use syrup, don't use the old Mrs. Butterworth and all this other stuff. It's, uh, it's loaded with uh, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, you know, we would suggest using some good uh, maple syrup. It's just a lot better for you. Okay, we're going to put some figs on here. Do you want to hold this plate yeah, and all I've this? Yeah, got that. And how about if we do, the, the possibilities are just endless. You can just do so many wonderful things with these grains. So you're putting a few pumpkin seeds on there now? Pumpkin seeds. And, and maybe some see. currants would be good. Currants, that would be nice. We've got some currants here on the table. You can tell I'm hungry right now. I'm picking out my own dinner plate. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, looks Let's like we're about there. And it looks like uh, we've got some apples here that we've got from a uh, local producer. And uh, we'll put that on there, and that'll make our, uh, our meal complete. Like I said, these are, uh, these are miniature. You know, many of your ap appetites might be larger than this, but it's... Uh, you know, this just gives you an idea of what you can do with these grains. We could actually even put a bean on here. What if we put some um, lentils on the side too? Okay, that's a fun meal. All right, we have some kamut. Okay, remember... Uh, Kamut is just a larger form of our, our wheat grain. Anyway. I've cooked this a long time, a full hour, and it's popped open and it's quite soft. It's nice. And you could actually do that with all the grains. If they're a little bit, um, you don't like to chew them as much, just cook them a little bit longer. Put a little bit more water in with them and they'll soften right up. Okay, Kamut. Okay, we're going to do this one sweet or savory? Let's do it savory. Okay. Okay, let's do, do you want to hold it? Mm -hmm. No. Let's do black beans. You can put it on the side or just mix it in. How about some lemon on there? If you want to give a little bit more zest to your uh, grains, uh, you can squeeze some lemon on as well. Uh, Nora's going to put uh, a little bit of our butternut squash on there. And we'll squeeze some lemon. We put a lot of lemon yes. on our and our grains. So. Always remember if you want to eat for nutrition, fresh is always best. So we try to go with uh, fresh lemon as much as possible rather than the uh, uh, lemon from uh, concentrate. I didn't salt any of these grains or the beans, so I'm going to put a little bit of uh, sea salt. This is from France, special salt. Put that on there. And what else look, would look good on there? I think that looks pretty good right now. Okay. Maybe some peas? Get some green on there. Okay. Okay. Very okay. good. All right. Okay. And we can just keep going and keep going with this. We can make all different kinds of uh, meals, yeah. sweet or savory. 
So we just wanted to show you the possibilities with the greens. They're all very easy to, um, to prepare. Um, yeah, and we're hoping that maybe we'll get you to crawl out of the box a little bit and try something that's uh, a little bit different but very nutritious for you. And tasty too. Mm -hmm. We can also make uh, milks and cheeses and gravies and ice creams with, with our grains. So we wanted to just show you, and in this video we're just going to show one milk today, and in another video coming we're going to show lots of different things that we can make uh, besides the entrees and the cereals. But we wanted to show you one milk, and this one's going to be millet milk. It's one that we like a lot. I'm just going to use one cup of millet. I've cooked this earlier just like we did the other, other green. And I'm going to put two cups of water in. One thing that's nice about millet as well is that uh, it doesn't have any gluten in it. For those that are gluten intolerant, uh, you know, this makes a, a nice milk. Okay, there's two cups of water. We're going to put about a handful of walnuts. You don't have to, but it, there's not a lot of fat in millet, and so we're going to put, add a little bit of fat. Okay, I'm going to put, I put two cups of of water in, a handful of walnuts, a pinch of salt, and we'll put some honey in today to sweeten. Now you can use maple syrup or, or like an unrefined sugar if you'd like. Let's see so, so what would be the difference in using the, the honey from the maple syrup? Well if you use maple syrup it's a, it makes a nice sweetener but you're going to get a little bit of more color. Your milk's going to be a little browner. So it's going to be whiter if you use the honey or the refined sugar. Okay. You, ready? you could also, you know, use a molasses or should we put one more in? Yeah, put one more in there. Okay. Okay. A lot of these milks are um, tastier than um, real milk. We like them really well. And they're very nutritious. Okay, so we're ready to blend it up? Let's blend it up. Okay. really can't blend them too long. Okay. It's just, they just keep getting smoother and nicer. But there I am going to filter this. I've got a strainer here, a pretty fine strainer, and I'm just going to filter just in case. Looks like milk. Now this is a nice creamy milk if you want it not as, not as thick, not as creamy. You could go ahead and add a little bit more water. But we like ours a little nice and creamy like that. I'm just going to kick this around in here, get a little bit more milk out. There's so many neat things that you can make with the grains. And like we said, we'll show you um, later on in another video some more things that we can make with grains. We've shown you the different kind of grains that you can, can use and have on hand. And uh, we've also shown you how you could prepare these to make uh, very simple meals. Now we want to show you uh, a few ways that you could process grain. Uh, we've got three mills here today. Um, uh, we've got uh, the Country Living Grain Mill, we've got uh, Nutra Mill, and we've got uh, the Whisper Mill, which uh, is actually under a different name now, but uh, all these are really good mills. Let me start by talking about the Country Living Grain Mill. Uh, this is one that uh, we are very partial to. It, uh, 
simply because you can have an electric motor on it and they're almost bulletproof. It's going at such a low RPM that uh, you know you just can't hurt these mills. They're they're made strong. Uh, you can take the motor out of the equation and put this handle on and and crank out your own uh, flour with that. Uh, like I said, it's a great tool to have if you're raising a family. You can get the children involved with it and have them cranking out that grain and making that flour so you can make some nice fresh bread. Um, again, we, when we talk about these mills, we're talking about uh, higher nutritional value as well. You're taking your grains, you're grinding them right there on the spot, and you're getting maximum nutrition out of uh, all the foods that you make with it. Uh, again, um, if you don't have one of these, uh, at least some kind of a manual grain mill, um, you should get one because they are, uh, you know, you never stop with them. You, uh, you don't have to worry about electricity. You can keep uh, making your bread as long as you have a wood cook stove or something of that nature to make your bread with. Okay, the next mill we want to talk about a little bit is the Nutra mill. This is a, uh, an electric grain mill. It's uh, probably one of the most popular ones on the market right now. It has a very large hopper on it, so you can grain a, grind a lot of grain at one time. Uh, this is something, if you were making many loaves of bread a day, this is, this is one that I would recommend because of the speed with which it works. It, uh, you know, it will just take care of many different things. I mean, my wife actually, uh, you know, we have a baking business in the summer and she can just crank out loaf after loaf of bread. I mean, we're talking dozens of loaves. So it's, uh, it's very effective that way. Uh, this whisper mill over here, I mentioned earlier, it's actually under a different name now. There's another design out there. Uh, it's also a good mill to have. Uh, it just depends on what your budget is. So, you know, you've got uh, uh, more expensive on the country living, a little bit less on the Nutra mill, and a little bit less on the whisper mill. So, uh, uh, with that, uh, like I said, I do want to encourage you to at least have one mill on hand that doesn't uh, doesn't use electricity uh, that you can hand crank so that uh, so that nothing ever stops you from uh, moving forward in your rural experience. Uh, just uh, very briefly, I'll just turn each one of these on just so you can see how they work. Uh, I've got this in electric mode right now in the Country Living Grain Mill. I failed to mention earlier, but you could actually uh, there are uh, there is hardware out there that you can use to turn this into a a mill that you can run with a bicycle, which that's that would be quite interesting to uh, to have, where you could get your exercise and then eat your meal afterwards. So it's uh, that sounds kind of fun. But we'll uh, we'll turn this on a minute, and just let you see how they work. You can see this is a real slow RPM type motor. Uh, the advantage to that is that uh, it is going to uh, make a cooler grind. It's not going to get hot at all. And, uh, you know, claims are that it's going to be more nutritious along those lines because you've eliminated the heating process. Uh, this one, the uh, Nutra Mill, we'll turn it on a minute. It's a little bit louder but much more fast. So uh, we will, uh, let me get around here where I can see this before I do that. We'll turn it on. See it's a little bit louder, but it, uh, it grinds rather quickly. Um, we won't turn on the whisper mill today. We just wanted to get you an idea of, uh, you know, if you're a person that likes a lot of quiet, you're gonna like the country living grain mill. Uh, if you're a person that makes a lot of bread products, you're probably going to want the Nutra Mill on hand uh, as well. Uh, the claims of both of these is that they can grind all kinds of grains, and uh, this one we know for sure has a different attachment that will grind corn, which is a little bit tougher on the machines. Uh, so uh, these are just some examples uh, of the type of mills that you can get, and like I said, you can. It's just going to enhance your experience if you're grinding your own grain, making your own flour, 
and producing your own uh, handmade loaves of bread, crackers, and things of that nature. So uh, we hope that you will uh, get one of these somewhere and uh, start, start making your bread. Okay, we're uh, demonstrating our country living grain mill in the manual position right now, which is uh, we would recommend that you have at least uh, one manual mill in your house because it, uh, you never know when the electricity is going to go out. Uh, you don't know if, uh, you know, you may be using your oven for, for baking bread. You may be getting down to uh, basic homestead living. So uh, it's good to have one of these. Uh, we have the country living grain mill. You know, we've talked about earlier, you can actually use this one. You could hook it up to a bicycle if you wanted to, uh, to do this. This is labor intensive, but uh, you get a lot of satisfaction out of uh, just grinding your grains. We just put a little bit of grain in the mill. And like I said, just get it started and it You've got your fine flour here, and you're ready to bake some bread. All right, you can see the two different grinds we have. Uh, this one was from the Nutri Mill, and this one was from the Country Living Grain Mill. You can see that this is a, a finer grind from your electric mill, and a, a more coarse grind from the Country Living. But both, uh, both are very acceptable for uh, making bread and bread products. Um, you can't go wrong with either. Okay, we, we've talked about um, the different ways you can store grain already. We've talked about uh, using the diatomaceous earth and we've talked about uh, freezing and using the dry ice. Now we're going to talk about a few, uh, I believe, uh, superior methods for storing your grains. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is a uh, big silver bag right here. It's mylar. Uh, it's very obtainable. You can uh, order these online and uh, you can see that this bag is a rather large one in appearance. They come in many different sizes. They even make them where they'll fit inside uh, buckets of this nature and you can uh, store your grains in there and then actually after you've got the grains in you put the, these are oxygen depleters uh, you'll put those inside there so that it draws the oxygen out of the bag so that uh, there's no way that uh, bugs can propagate in there and it'll keep the freshness up. Um, you'll use these uh, depleters according to the bag size. Uh, it'll give you the directions and it works rather well. Just to show you a uh, finished product. Oh, and I should mention uh, when you do put your grain in here, all you have to use is a simple, some kind of an iron that will actually make your ceiling on the top of this bag and it'll seal it shut and uh, the storage possibilities are endless with the mylar and uh, it will last for uh, several months to several years so it's uh, you know just a fantastic product we'll show you another quickly one uh, that we have that's got wheat in it you can see this is a 50 pound bag of wheat and you can see it's rather large uh, but you can see how it's nice and sealed up above and you know many of you may be saying well if I seal that what happens if I open it up well the nice thing about the mylar is is that when you do open it you can reseal it and it will again keep it sealed uh, the only thing you'd have to keep in mind is you probably have to renew your oxygen depleter uh, when you do open it up but a good way to uh, preserve your grains. Okay, another uh, device that I wanted to show you today is a vacuum sealer. Uh, these are readily available for the public. Uh, this one is actually a, a food saver and they have many different uh, vacuum sealers in their line and uh, you can see it makes a nice neat bag here. We've got some of our uh, uh, corn nuts that we made and we've sealed them up in this bag and you know this bag will actually last from clear up to two years after it's sealing so uh, you know what a neat way to preserve your food another way to do it is 
uh, these vacuum sealers actually come with a vacuum tube and this one's actually made for small mouth jars and you can actually put this top on this small mouth jar and hook up your vacuum hose on it and this is actually some popcorn that we bought and we're wanting to preserve that. We like to have lots of popcorn and different grains on hand for winter time. And all we have to do is push the vacuum button on this. It's gonna make a little bit of noise for a minute. And you can hear it uh, gradually getting louder. And right now it's gone off, it's sealed it. What it's doing is it's pulled all the oxygen out of the jar and we'll wait for the light to go off and once it does then we just pull our hose off and take our cap off put our sealer back on and you can see the cap is sealed on good there's no air inside there and this is going to keep this preserved for a good long time uh, you can actually even do, uh, I've got a jar full of dates right now that I put in here. And, uh, you know, with any of your uh, items like dried fruit in that, something that's been processed, you can seal them up in the same way. And... Again, we're just sucking the air out of this container. waiting for it to make a good seal it's gone off again and now we're just waiting for the light to clear this is so simple to use and uh, so very effective so you can uh, if you got lots of canning jars and that it's a good way to seal a lot of your uh, grain products and your uh, dried fruits and things of that nature now I do want to tell you that this machine's not made for canning uh, vegetables and things like that it's not you need to use a pressure cooker on that but it will seal and take the oxygen out of, of foods that are, are non-hazardous so it's a just a good way to uh, seal things up well, let's take this off again and now we've got a good seal on our dates and it'll preserve them for several months up to even a year so keeps the bugs out and keeps things nice and clean uh, the last method of storage again we wanted to show you and, and there's probably others but the ones we'll show you today is just a simple bucket that seals down uh, we've used this in the past uh, the only thing I want to remind you of is if you use a bucket of this nature uh, you'll want to use the oxygen depleters in that also and again follow the directions and put those in and then uh, seal the bucket down and it will uh, keep your grains bug free during that time um, this is uh, probably a less preferred method than the vacuum sealer and the mylar bag but it is an effective method it's been used uh, for many years so again keep those grains nice and fresh bug free and uh, we hope that you can use some of these products that we've talked about. We want to show you another way to use your grains. We're going to start a tray of, uh, wheat, of wheatgrass and so we're going to use our sprouted grain and we're just going to sow them on top of this bed of dirt. Soil? Soil. Not we call dirt. it soil here. <laughs> okay. So this was a a cup of grain and it, they've sprouted and we're just going to just weave that over the top and this will make a nice thick tray of, of wheatgrass. Okay, Nora, when we put these in the uh, soil, how long does it take for them to, uh, the grass to grow? Well, it's going to take about a week. Okay. Maybe a little bit less if we cover it with with a black trash bag. Okay, why, why do we cover it with a black trash bag? It's going to force it to, to, to grow a little bit sooner. 
Okay. We're going to spray it every day, morning and night now. And instead of putting dirt on top, if we put dirt on top, then when we cut the wheatgrass, it's going to be real dirty. Our wheatgrass is going to be dirty. But by just laying it on top like this, it'll be a lot cleaner. It's going to make like a mat. The, the roots will mat out, and when we cut it, it's going to be real clean. There won't be any dirt or anything in the, in the wheatgrass that we cut. Okay, so we've got all our wheatgrass uh, sprouts spread out on the soil now, and Nora's going to you're going to spray them. Just, and so now instead of rinsing twice a day, now I'm going to spray twice a day. So I'm not going to pour water in there. I'm just going to spray on the top. And this is kind of our introduction to our our farming videos that are coming up soon. We're going to uh, share a lot of. Uh, different agricultural tips and uh, you know this is a way that you can start your your garden indoors uh, the benefits of wheatgrass are many it has well over 90 different minerals in it and if you juice this grass you know just in a little two to four ounce cup uh, you're getting all the vitamins and minerals that you would need for for a day for a week even because it's just it's just loaded and we've seen many people get well incorporating the wheatgrass juice in the diet. It's been 10 days since we planted our wheatgrass and it's about six inches tall now. It's ready to harvest. So this is what we started with. Remember it was just one cup of, of wheat and um, we're going to put that away and we're going to go ahead and show you how to cut this. You can use scissors or a knife. And we can just keep growing this now. It, it'll grow up again and we can get another good cutting off of it. And this first cutting will be sweeter. But wheatgrass juice is a wonderful way to use your wheat and it's very nutritious. We can get two cuttings of wheatgrass, good cuttings from from this flat. There's about oh two feet of grass in here. Now, Nora, what's what's this going to taste like? Well, wheatgrass is is real sweet. It's very um, it's almost syrupy. It's very very strong. It's something you don't want to take on an empty stomach. Okay, so and how much of it do you drink at a time? About two ounces. Okay, and we're, and we're going to show them that in a minute. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll cut a little bit more, and we should have enough to cut, or enough to, to juice. This flat will probably make about eight ounces of juice. That doesn't sound like very much, but it's, it, if you try to drink that whole, that whole cup, you'd you'd struggle with trying to get it all down. It's, it's very strong. So is it better to start off uh, maybe a little bit and then work your way up as it you're would drinking be good. wheatgrass? This is like taking, um, like drinking vitamins. Vitamins, okay, yes, great. Yes, it's very good for you. So we have a, a machine here that is very good for, for doing grasses. Yes, and, and not all, this machine will do many things. It's an omega juicer. Uh, not all of uh, these machines are made for uh, for making wheatgrass juice, so you need something that is specific to that whenever you buy. There are several different machines. This just happens to be the one that we have. But uh, what it does, it will actually it will actually press um, the grass when we when we start to use it. Uh, are we ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. What I'll have you do is feed that in. Okay, and I will get some of this going down here. It should, you don't even have to do that. It should just take it. it. Should, okay. Okay. And it uh, takes quite a bit of grass to uh, get the amount of juice that you would use each day. That's why Nora has, uh, has cut so much of it. OK, 
Okay, there are, there are wheatgrass uh, grinders that um, are hand cranked that you don't need electricity for. Okay. Uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is it's going to take you a while to get the amount of juice that you're uh, you're wanting to drink. So uh, electric always makes it faster, but uh, if you don't have electric, there are alternatives. So if we had a large family, we'd probably start some wheatgrass maybe every day. Mm -hmm. Another flat, and so we'd have a flat that we could juice every single day, helping somebody that was sick. Okay, looks like we've completed the task now, and we've got just a little bit of juice. And you can see we, we cut that whole flat of, of wheatgrass over there, and now we've got probably approximately two, maybe three ounces of juice. Uh, Nora's straining it right now. There's still still a little bit of extra pulp. Remember, uh, we want to uh, get all the pulp out, but we can when we get ready to, to use it. Okay, and that looks like pretty close to about two ounces of juice right I'd there. say four. You think four? Yeah. Okay, great. If it was all the way filled up, it would be an eight ounce. Okay. So maybe all right, super. four to six. Okay, so let's talk about uh, our mat over here right now. You said that uh, you could get another cutting off of this? We can. So we can just keep, uh, keep this watered and uh, it'll grow up. So I'll probably take it outside for a couple hours every day if the sun is shining and it'll, it'll grow faster and okay, it'll what be healthier. What about uh, when we're done? Can we replant this and uh, grow on it again? No, um, can't replant it because it has actually become like a mat. But I can take this outside and put it someplace in the yard, maybe that uh, the grass isn't growing very good, and it, it'll just it'll, it'll be like sod. And, uh, and I'm assuming we could use it for compost as well. Yes, this would be very good for compost. Okay, yes. great. Well, we'll. Try some of this out in a minute and, uh, you know, we hope you'll enjoy it. In concluding our video on grains today, uh, we've shown you many different ways to prepare and use the grains. We've shown you how to, to pick and store grains. Um, there are many different places where you can obtain these grains. You can, you can get them from uh, bulk food warehouses, from health food stores. Uh, We've even started to see Bob's Red Mill and, and many of the, uh, the larger shopping stores uh, that you can go to. Um, we would encourage you to start using these whole grains because it's much better for your health, for one. Uh, they're easy to prepare. You can make simple meals with them. And they come straight from the Creator's hand, so you can't receive any greater blessing than that. So we... Uh, we pray that you've enjoyed this video and that it will be of, of great use to you. Thank you.